Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Benn and you're watching Expressive Photography. Welcome to the penultimate video of 2020 uh, and what a year it's been. Now, what I want to do today is Anne Christine and I were up in an area, kind of central highlands of Scotland uh, about 10 days ago and we made a bunch of images and we were just up there exploring and kind of checking out some areas and just being there. Uh, but as uh, becomes normal, you start to think about the subjects and the way that you can put across some of this content and in today's video I want to look at many of the photographs I took and there's not loads but I want to look at each of them and really think about well why did I take that, why does it work, why doesn't it work, all of these being my uh, subjective opinion of course and um, so we're going to dive into my Lightroom catalogue pick out the ones that I think are more successful than others, discuss the triggers, discuss the things that made me want to point my camera at it, and talk about the difference between the engagement that we have in the landscape versus photography that we feel can be expressive and we want to share with other people. So uh, let's set the scene with this beautiful area of Scotland and then we'll dive into Lightroom and you can kind of see what I was pointing my camera at. Now when you walk through these beautiful woods and come to this uh, calm loch, uh, the first thing that strikes you on a calm day when there's no wind is the reflections. And I think as photographers we're drawn to reflections for the same reason that we're drawn to sunsets. They're, they're curiosities of nature. Uh, beautiful red skies uh, are the same kind of uh, emotional thing as seeing a perfect reflection and when we see the landscape perfectly mirrored in a clear water surface what it's doing is it's creating patterns, it's creating curious relationships between the subject and the reflection and it can be really cool to put these on their side because they tend to make faces and animals and things like that but as they as we see them I tend to feel that photographs of reflections are actually less impactful than the experience itself. I think they're easy photographs to make and I think they're easy to get drawn into. Uh, but for me personally, I look at the photograph and it's just like, yeah, it is what it is. There's a tendency for us to put the horizon line in the center of the frame so that we have the top and the bottom are equal. Um, and for me, I, I think they're pretty photographs, but I don't necessarily think they're that successful photographs. And I don't necessarily think they're that exciting photographs. So I took a couple of the straight up reflections uh, and very quickly moved on from that because I've been to situations like that in the past. And the, the reason I think it, they don't particularly work is they're very linear. In this case, there's a very up and down nature, the horizon bisects the frame. So if we think about the, the geometry of that or the dynamics or the lack of dynamics, horizontal lines are static, vertical lines are static. When you walk through a city, the architecture feels solid and dependable. And that's the same when you're walking through a forest. It's not until you come to the 
angular trees, the ones that look like they're about to fall on your head, that you start to feel the tension of the landscape. So if I look at this next composition, now this is just the raw file. Everything I'm going to show you here is just raw files. I think this is a far, far more interesting photograph. That angular line of that tree going across the frame is creating this dynamic and that is juxtaposed with the pointy pine tree. So we have a pointy dynamic juxtaposed with a nice sweeping line and the way those uh, these green branches uh, are kind of adding a bit of graphical interest. Now this is a photograph I do like, this is a photograph I could totally get on board with because I think it's telling much more of a story uh, and it's the dynamics of the content that is triggering that emotional um, relationship, I guess, both for me when I was pointing the camera at it and as a viewer when you look at it, all of a sudden we feel that tension, we feel that energy in the frame and the vertical stuff, uh, the way the, the light is coming in and it's you can see there's a direction to that light, it's coming in from the left hand side so we're getting three dimensionality on our tree trunks. Uh, so this was very quickly something that I thought yeah I can get on board with this. I started to play around with reflections and the thing with reflections of things is that you can either focus on the surface of the water which may have textures or ripples on it or you can focus on the thing which is obviously much further away. So with, with, a, with a lens like this you can focus on the surface of the water and the actual reflection will be out of focus. I think if we skim through some of these, so that you can see the, the all of the details on the screen now, all of those details are actually ripples on the surface of the water, whereas the image after, um, yeah, these ones have different focal points to either show the, the, the focus on the subject or the focus on the reflection of the subject. And that's a very interesting one. Now, this particular photograph that's on the screen now, I think is way more expressive because we're focusing on the surface of the water, which is creating all this beautiful ripple detail. And it's almost like a, <clears throat> a very abstract painting or a very abstract sketch of a subject. Uh, so I think this one is an image that I could start to work on. Uh, I would be interested in exploring some of the emotional interactions between the colour palette, the cool and the warm colours, the transitions between the cool and the warm, and obviously all of these great textures and details in the surface water. I also appreciate that some people are going to look at this and think it's a pile of garbage, um, but that's not why I make photographs. I don't make photographs to, to impress people. I make photographs because I'm engaged with the landscape. Now the famous uh, or the main kind of elephant in the room with this location is this island which is out in the middle of the loch there. And I will just quickly dive into the um, the develop module there just to kind of bring out a little bit more detail there. There's this island out in the middle of the loch and there's some old pine trees on it and as you can see there's quite a lot of pinky clouds in the sky. This was very early morning just after sunrise but I personally feel that this is an okay photograph. Uh, I think after a bit of time I might have kind of dialed it down to one of these two photographs yeah, that's the kind of straight up one. And then we have this second one where I decided to bring in a bit more of the the stuff on the left hand side there. So if we open that up, colour in photography, especially pink morning light, is a kind of band-aid that patches over boring compositions. Uh, I've said this before in videos that pretty colours kind of 
people just go, ooh, lovely. And it's a bit like reflections, ooh, lovely reflections. But we're not seeing beyond that to the actual quality of our engagement with the landscape. So I did make a few of these photographs, but I don't feel particularly emotionally attached to them. What I did become more attached to was some reflections of clouds in the water and these uh, grasses that are growing out of the loch there. Uh, the surface of the water had a very metallic nature to it, this grey, uh, luminous, uh, metallic mercury, that type of feel to it. Um, and I think these are images that we could work on. And again, I'll just dive into the develop module just to bring out some of that, uh, the highlights there. And we can probably make those grass stems a bit more explicit, open up the shadows, reveal the details. The less blacks we have in the frame, the, the more airy and ethereal this image is going to feel. Consequences, consequences, consequences. Every slide or movement changes the articulation and the emotion and the feel of these photographs. Um, there is a direct relationship between the slider movements and the emotional resonance of the scene that we want to portray. Uh, this is the important thing about expressive photography is it's not about recipes, it's not about conforming to other people's standards of aesthetics. It's about being an individual, being yourself and expressing yourself and your preferences. And there is an emotional um, uh, translation manual between bright, airy, articulate, atmospheric versus dark, moody, sinister. All I need to do is that and we have a very different photograph. <laughs> so there's no, um, there's no right or wrong, there's just a consequence of our actions. Uh, I enjoyed this little area and I made a few photographs there and I even got to the point where I was just photographing the surface tension as well. You know, things like this, they're so ordinary, they're so everyday, they're so omnipresent, they're just everywhere. You go to a canal or a, a, a loch in a pond or a pond in a park in a city, you can make photographs like this anywhere that there's there's water just about. But it's noticing patterns, colours, transitions, luminosity, contrast. The colour palette in this, again, is going to have a hugely profound impact. The cooler it gets has a luxurious feel to it. The warmer it gets, we're creating energy uh, and a much more ebullient kind of over the top feel to it. So again, temperature and tint allow us to see the difference, pulling it down into the cool, pushing it up into the warm feel consequences. You get the drift. You know where I go with this type of stuff. The more contrast we add to this, again, more impactful it gets. And again, there's no recipe to finding the perfect way to do this. It's all about believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to explore, to and giving yourself permission to have your own preference, uh, even if it's unusual or controversial. Um, and again, these are the types of photographs that if you want to, you can kind of play around with them, you can flip them, you can make them all sorts of different ways uh, to change the aesthetics of the thing that you're looking at. We went on a bit of a drive after that and ended up at another loch. Um, and I think this photograph here, it should be fairly obvious why I was pointing my camera at it. This bracken, uh, the, the dried bracken from the summer, um, is going this gorgeous golden colour and it tends to last like that quite well into the winter uh, until it really dies back. So there's these warm tones in, in this shot. 
Now again, we've just got a straight up uh, reflection photograph. Um, if we add some contrast to that, then this orange mass, which in its own right is kind of triangular, and then we've got the birch and the purple and the green of the fir trees. Um, it's quite a nice color palette. Uh, and again, it's something that is an obvious thing for us to point our cameras at. It's very obvious why we pointed our cameras at it because it's so graphical, it's so colorful, um, but you will almost never see me posting photographs like this because I just think they're too explicit for me. Um, and that, that might sound a little judgmental, but it, it just doesn't excite me very much. Um, I think it's pretty and I think it's uh, lovely to see Scotland on a day like this. You know, when you see the big picture with the, the birch at the back and the firs and, you know, it is a very pretty scene and I totally understand uh, its appeal. And that one, the bigger picture might actually be a little bit more successful than the tighter one that I just showed you. If we pull in that top there, that's probably a, a better photograph. Um, and we can create a good chunk of contrast there to really bring out some of those gorgeous colors. And that I think has, it, you know, I think seeing more of those grasses in the marsh there, uh, the first image that I showed you was a bit tight. This I think is more successful, particularly with that beautiful purple young birch in the background there. So this is an image take it into the lab color space in Photoshop, create a bunch of contrast and play around with the colors to, to really dial in a much more delicate and harmonious color palette. Uh, and that's something that I think could be quite successful. Very good for selling workshops uh, <laughs> because I think that's the type of thing that people generally kind of buy into. Finally, Uh, this little scene here, uh, I really did like, and I ended up taking one of these with the Hasselblad uh, 501CM uh, using uh, Fuji Velvia uh, to, to make a, a slide exposure because I, I really did like it. Um, this is quite graphical um, because you've just got this very... Um, the vertical nature of the center pines and then the horizontal nature of the horizon and the reflections. Everything's dead center, the trees in the middle. It's almost architectural in a way that's very graphical. Um, it's very simplistic, uh, but at the same time, tonally, I think it's quite complex. This for me would be a high key photograph uh, where I would be pushing up a lot of the whites and even opening the shadows there. And then it's a case of dialing in a uh, color space. So by cooling it, it becomes a bit more austere. The reflection gets a little bit cooler. Everything cools down. If we make everything vibrant and saturated and punchy, then we're adding energy into this equation. It's like a volume control on my audio interface there we crank up the saturation, we're raising the volume. We add contrast, we're raising the volume. And this for me isn't a photograph about volume. It's a photograph about introspection. And when we talk about taking a quiet moment to ourselves, these are the types of photographs that I can contemplate and relax into rather than all the volume high, contrast high, and if I quickly do that for you, and if I just take the contrast slider and aggressively push it over there, chuck up some clarity and chuck up some vibrance and a bit of saturation, very quickly we end up with this high volume, high impact, not very aesthetically pretty photograph. Uh, so I would much rather dial everything back embrace the quiet voice rather than the loud voice.
So I'm going to leave you uh, just with this photograph again. This is the one that I think was my favourite of the day and it was it was the second photograph I made of the day. Um, I think this is the one that I would work and I will work it and I'll put it on the screen uh, now in fact to show you how to take this and distill it down to its constituent parts which are the luminosity, the contrast and the geometry um, and that way we are using all the things that we learned in the Luminosity and Contrast ebook, which is about engagement with the graphical nature of the world and how the luminosity map of an image guides us through the frame and tells us where to look and how to feel. And then the colour, uh, which I talk about in my Colour of Meaning ebook, is further enhancing that message uh, or in some cases counterpointing that message to create a juxtaposition or tension uh, and we can use luminosity and contrast and colour in conjunction with each other to uh, be very articulate regarding the way we want to express ourselves both in keeping with the way that the image is laid out in front of us or to, to kind of throw in a curveball and do something very very different with it. Like I said, this is the second last Sunday video of the year. Next week, I'm going to be out in the snow in a video that we recorded a few days ago when we had a big dump of snow here in the west of Scotland. And I made one of my favourite photographs of the year, which is going to be a fine art print. Uh, we've already had some pre-orders of that. Uh, so I'm really excited about that photograph in particular. It was so evocative for me and so expressive. So what we're going to do is kind of show you a making of that photograph, both in the field and then we'll also look at the print and perhaps how we go about soft proofing and making sure that the print turns out exactly like we're going to do it. And that'll be the last video of 2020 before we take our Christmas and New Year break. Thank you very much as always for everyone who supports the channel, for everyone who subscribed to like our videos and comments on our videos. It's been a heck of a year uh, for expressive photography with both incredible challenges and huge feelings of um, achievement and success for what we've managed to do this year thanks to you people. So from Anne Christine and myself a big thank you do us a favour, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, buy a book um, and we look forward to bringing you tons of new content in 2021. But for now, that is it and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Tune in on Wednesday for part two of the Simon Baxter interview uh, where we really start getting stuck into creativity um, and really what it means to Simon uh, and we really get into our conversation. So please tune in on Wednesday for part two of Simon Baxter on Vision and Light. But for today, Alistair Ben, Expressive Photography, thank you very much and uh, yeah, have a good week. <laughs>